Barbara Hanley characteristics. Michael Andretti's in front of the hometown crowd. You've had that pleasure at our race in Toronto. Does it make a difference? It certainly does. You're very busy here for the week before the event. There's a lot of functions to go to, especially with the name Andretti here in Nazareth. And I suspect by the time you get into the car, you put your helmet on, slide to the cockpit, and it's all of a sudden solitude. You have a quietness, you get your job done because you've had a very hectic week. The downhill run on the back stretch into turn three as you look down from the Honda Helicam. And just that quickly off of four into the trioval. They've been turning laps at a fairly incredible pace. Leader speed average is up at 146, but that's with the yellow. The race record is above that, and they'll be closing in on that, I think, fairly quickly here because they have run now for 50 laps or a quarter of the race without but one yellow. There's Greg Moore in the blue and white car really getting going right now, Paul. Yeah, he's closing down on on a fight here that is bringing him up through the front of the field and bringing him into contact for the lead as he just got around through it and now sets his sights on Michael Andretti. Rick Moore is a young man, very young, Canadian. I think he's one of the brightest stars that we have coming up in IndyCar racing. He annihilated the Indy Lights last year. A lot of people didn't think he'd do. That's him right there in the blue and white car. A lot of people didn't think he'd do that good this year in the IndyCar. But he's already looking like a star. Nine I cars. wonder if we have too many Canadians here. We've got one set next to us. You said that right here in front of Scott. That's good. <laughs> and there's more in their way, I think, up there, too. I think so. <laughs> now, Greg Moore has certainly been impressive. It was at this track about three years ago that I remember watching him waiting outside the rails to talk to several of the IndyCar owners, but he was so polite. He didn't want to, as, as many, in fact, spectators have done, they've gotten tossed out, but he didn't even want to go in and violate the area of the uh, garage. On board now with uh, Michael Andretti. Emerson sits just ahead, and the report is now that Hero is out of the race, and Jack Maroon, you can update us on Parker. Parker Johnstone has his hands full. His car was so loose, gentlemen, that he said, I've got to come on to pit road. They changed one tire, and they also went and they put some more wing in the front of the car. He said, I just can't handle a mile here for even another 10 or 12 laps. Well, Michael, now trying to overhaul second place Emerson Fittipaldi. Paul Tracy has two and a half seconds on Fittipaldi since we came back to the single green that we have, the single yellow that we've had thus far. Now, Michael and Emmo, here's two guys that are really in good shape right now. We saw Michael earlier in the day. He's been going to the gym an awful lot. He's been working out. He knows that these Indy cars are very hard to turn. The camera doesn't show how hard they really are to turn, but they're very fast steering, very hard physically, and especially at this track. Emerson Fittipaldi, one of the toughest guys I've ever known. Paul Tracy leads it. The uh, first car for routine stop is in and out, and that's Mauricio Guzelman. There's your last lap run for Fittipaldi and for Andretti. So Michael Quicker on the track. through the 57th lap. We've mentioned that it really opens up right about now. Any time now, we ought to see the leaders have to think about coming into the pits. And of course, that'll create a real scramble at the front of the field. Because on this track, as we watch the leader, Paul Tracy, in and out of the pits can destroy a lead of a race and put you way back, especially if you falter at all in any way on the stop. So the pressure really on the crew really on the crews and it's really on the drivers to get in and out of the pits as quickly as possible because if you lose anything in the pits it's very hard to get it back on the racetrack consequently if the crew can give you a great pit stop and you can gain a position or two yet you don't have to on the racetrack it just makes for easy going and she does got a, it's only 19 to 20 seconds around here so again as Paul said if they've got any mistakes made they're going to lose a lap in the pits and that's that's the destruction thing you can't make that back now another thing to remember there's speed limits. They can't go in any faster than the other guys. They all run on electronically controlled rev limiters. So nobody really should be able to violate unless they come in too fast. All right, so Paul Tracy is in the lead of the race. We all will leave you now, but it's 
we come back, we should see the leaders head into the pits. 59 laps are now complete. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat fused. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power and improved fuel efficiency over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. It's out there, all things possible. Grab some friends and reach for the sky. We've been reaching too. Brewed a new beer from the heart of the hops. A beer with heart that goes down easy. We think so much of this new beer, we're just calling it who we are. Miller, it's a new day. Reach for what's out there. teammates, Alex Zanardi and Jimmy Vassar. Alex? Hey, there's nobody better. I mean, he was born to drive. I'm new to the target team, but Jimmy has made me feel right at home. Alex is the fastest thing on four wheels. Really. Who else cannot describe how I feel about Jimmy? It's the moment they've been waiting for. For one lucky three-year-old, the dream will come true. The Visa Triple Crown Challenge begins with the Kentucky Derby, Saturday on ABC. Now, Michael Andretti continues his pursuit of second place Emerson Fittipaldi. Apparently, the yellow has helped out a bit because the crews have now pushed back their stop as we're on the 68th lap. And now they're telling Michael Andretti, maybe lap 76 will be the spot we'll bring you in. So. That yellow, that played into the hands of the leaders. It's going to let Paul Tracy pull a little further away. He is nearly six seconds ahead of Emerson as Michael Andretti moves down inside. Emerson comes up behind his teammate, Christian Fittipaldi, and Michael goes into second place. Yeah, Michael really has been working on that for a long time. I think that's one of the hardest, well, certainly the hardest pass we've seen today. He worked for many laps on that one. Well, the pass itself was one of those hold your breath deals. Oh, it certainly wasn't here, especially because you're always turning at this racetrack, as we talked about before. And Michael dearly obviously wants to have a good finish because he really doesn't have any points so far this year. And to stand on the podium in front of his home crowd, all the better. So Michael Andretti now in second, but he has nearly eight seconds. Nearly a little shorter than half a lap to try to make up if he wants to catch Paul Tracy. But again, we should be about six laps away from the first stop. This will tell us a lot about engine performance in terms of mileage, exactly where some of these stops come. DeFerrin on the pit road already on lap 71. So many times the fuel has made the difference at the latter part of this race. So we've got to watch for that. Everybody's watch when they stop. Who's getting the best mileage? That's going to make a big difference off at the end. So Emerson Fittipaldi has fallen back into third place, Jack. Well, Paul, let me tell you how that happened. And this is an issue on short ovals, as you say. There's a lot of rubber that comes off the track. We call it marbles. Goes to the outside of the groove. Working race traffic, Emerson Fittipaldi was forced up into the marbles. Picked up some of that rubber on his tires. And according to Rick Reinemann, it's going to take a few laps for Emmo to be able to scrub that back off and get racy again. Fittipaldi does have some space to make up, but of course, when he makes his stop, you're assuming four fresh tires. At least right sides will come in as fresh as we watch Paul Tracy. Paul has no trouble passing anybody, at the, it appears, to any place at any time that he wants to. He's handling as good right now, it appears, as when he started the race. Brian Hurdiff 
Being passed by Tracy. Herta had a little bit of a problem. They were afraid they weren't going to get the car out to the starting grid or into the field. They were working feverishly on it at the last moment. And then just before the start of the engines, they were able to push it into position, and he was able to take the green along with the rest of the field. Another thing that's going to be interesting to watch is we mentioned the engines earlier. There's been rumors that Mercedes engines have made a little bit of gain. Honda's been beating everybody this year so far kind of badly, too much. So Ford, Mercedes have been working hard. A couple of the engines with Ford are different than the others. They're trying a new experimental thing. And this one right here, Paul Tracy. That's Mercedes. Roger Penske, of course, owns part of that. And they're working, we know, very hard to get the Mercedes back up or even be better than the Honda. You can bet anytime somebody gets a hundredth on you, the engineers go to work on both chassis and engine and tires. Try to get that thing back. Emerson Fittipaldi on the pit road. And a lot of people wonder, Paul, what does it what does the manufacturer of the engine, the build, people that build the racing engine, do? The main thing they're doing right now is the plant boxing with a the turbo, there's MON. If they change the turbocharger plant and box. There is Emerson. We mentioned that he was on the pit road. They've got the starter out behind the car though, Jack. Well, they've had a problem putting on the right rear tire. The, the, the actual, the wrench actually locked up and they had a problem. They thought they were going to stall the car. Emerson, a very costly stop because he had it knocked until that lug wrench locked up. Oh, boy, and Emerson had such a good run going. 25.6 seconds in the pits for Emerson Fittipaldi. Talked about how costly the stops can be. That one's going to be a real killer as Michael Andretti comes in. Michael Andretti, the second place car. Paul Tracy remains out. Remember, they enter the pits over on the back stretch, and Gary Gerald waits for him. Christian Fittipaldi, his teammate, got out just ahead of him. Michael had to hit the brakes hard and slid into position. Now, they went with the primary Goodyear tire, which is a little harder. The Penske team went with the option, which is softer. Michael's staying with the primary, but he oh, stopped no. the engine. They started to roll at 13 and a half seconds, and here is one of those miscues that can just cost you the day. Now it fires, it the gears, and here's a burnout. Look at his eyes. You can just see the misery that he's feeling. World is watching that big mistake, and such an important mistake. One of the things about racing, it seems like you could go from the top of the world to the bottom in about three nanoseconds with something like that. Well, we say that, and here comes Paul Tracy, and he needs a good clean pit stop, so he doesn't have any of the fate that the other two guys did that were directly behind him. And uh, I'm sure that they've seen what's going on here earlier on with these two other guys, and they'll want a clean stop in and out so he can retain that lead. Leader is in, Jack. And we Paul Tracy! We go. A real problem with Tracy. He hits the marks and he crashes right up against the wall, gets one of the crewmen, locked it up, and Paul, the crewman, is hurt. That's we'll have to get back to you. About it. You can see how hard it is. The crewman got hit. Bad mistake. Paul's not going to do a pit stop. He's going to go out, come around while they get organized, and come back in again. They're going to have to replace that crew member, too. Somebody else is going to have to take the job over. What could have happened here? Lock the front brakes up. He came in too fast, locked the brakes up. Instead of letting the brakes off and driving on through, right there he hit oh. the crew man. For sure he's going to have an awfully bad leg or a sore leg, no matter what. Oh, I'd hate to see that. The one thing that's not protected in the pit stop, of course, is the crew. Michael Andretti. Greg Moore, his... Uh, his team serviced him routinely. He has been in and out. And so now with the stops beginning, everything sorts around. Let's go back to Jack. Well, Paul, this is really not something we like to see. Matt Johnson, who was in charge of the left front tire, was actually hit by Paul Tracy. Now he's conscious, he's awake, he's talking to the medical technicians right now. It actually, the front wing went up against his leg. So now the emergency medical people here are going to lift him over the wall, and this is not good. The one thing that Paul Tracy said on the radio is, guys, I'm just so very sorry. Now, the difficult part is they need to get Matt out of the way because Tracy needs to come in to take on fuel. Forget tires. This is a very difficult moment for Team Penske and Paul Tracy. It's about to become more difficult. They're going to give the black flag to Paul Tracy for a safety violation. At least that's what uh, race control has indicated, but for the time being, they're holding off on it. Robbie Gordon in and out. Boy, this